In our previous 3JS tutorial, we learned about the basics of physics. We started off by understanding how the 3JS game world is separate from the physics world. Then we compared and contrasted three different physics libraries, AmmoJS, Rapier 3D, and CanonJS. After that, we set up our project with CanonJS and added a debugger to make it easy to visualize the physics world. And finally, we synced our physics world with the 3JS game world and went over some basic examples. In this video, we'll dive deeper into CanonJS physics by going through the process of building a simple car using the framework. Let's jump right in. First thing that I always like to do is set up our 2JS scene with an axis helper. This axis helper just allows us to visualize the orientation of all the objects in the scene. Once we do that, we're going to initialize our Canon JS world by setting the gravity to be negative 9.82 in the Y direction. Afterwards, we're going to add a ground body and here the ground body is going to have a type of static and it's going to be a geometric plane. We're also going to want to rotate this 90 degrees because because otherwise the ground will be vertical and that just doesn't make sense. And add that ground to our physics world. And finally, we're going to import our Canon debugger. This is going to take in the test 3JS scene and the physics world. And all this does is it creates a green wireframe on each object so that we can easily visualize our physics world. Once we do that, all we got to do is animate this world. We're going to create this simple little animation function, which is going to run every single frame. And in it, we're going to update our Canon debugger and our physics world. And once we have everything set up, you should see a ground plane that looks like this and an axis helper. And now we can start actually adding our car to this scene. Just as a quick note, this code is basically a simplified version of the example code on the Canon JS website, uh, which is linked right over here. First thing that we're going to want to do is create the body for our car. And here I'm just setting the mass of the car to be five. And we're going to set the position of this car to be uh, zero six zero, which means it's going to be placed a little bit above the ground about six units. And we're also going to set the shape of this car. One interesting thing to note here is that we're going to set this car body to be a Canon JS rigid vehicle. Now, if you go to the code, this is a class that makes it easy to create vehicles. And you'll see how it comes into play in the next section, but I'm gonna create, create it like this, add it to our physics world and run the same animation as before. So when I refresh the page, you should see this sort of uh, body of the car falling down. Next thing is gonna be to add the wheels. Once we set up the body for the car, we're also going to want to add wheels. And this is where the vehicle class comes into play. So here first, let's set up our initial details for this wheel. So the wheel is just going to be a sphere and it's going to have a material of type wheel, which is already defined in Canon JS. And we're going to move it a little bit down because we don't want the wheel to sort of intersect with the car itself. Once we do that, we're going to want to create the wheel here by passing in the mass and the material. Afterwards, we can add the wheel shape, which is a sphere to the wheel to the wheel body, add some angular dampening and set the wheel on the vehicle. So this is where that helpful class vehicle comes into play. Let's go to the definition of this function and see what's actually happening. It just does a bunch of stuff underneath the hood, including adding some constraints like the hinge constraint so that when you turn the wheel, it actually turns as you would expect. So basically this class makes it really easy for us to add a wheel. All we got to do is pass in the wheel body and a couple of other information like the position and the axis as well as the direction. And so now you'll see here that we've got our first wheel and it's sort of tied to this body of the car. So as the wheel touches the ground here, you'll see the body gets slanted a little bit. Now adding the other four wheels is pretty straightforward. The only thing that we really need to worry about is the position where the wheel exists. We don't want them all in the same spot. Here we're going to set it in the negative Z direction. This third wheel is going to be in the positive X, positive Z direction. The fourth wheel is going to be in the positive X, negative Z direction. So once we save that, we should have our car with four separate wheels on it. When I refresh the page, you'll see our basic car with the wheels. 
The way we can ensure that it works is to slant the ground and see the car move. So let's do that. Here what I'm doing is I'm updating the ground body and I'm setting the position to be a little bit slanted in the y direction just a little bit so we can see the car working in action so as you can see we've got our simple little car working because the road is slanted the car is going to move backwards but it's going to keep moving backwards forever there's no way to control this so up next is going to be adding user controls so now what we wanna do is to add user controls. And here is a simple way to do that. So here we're adding a document event listener on key down. And when the W key is pressed or the up arrow, we're going to set the wheel force based on a specific wheel. And we know that when we created our vehicle, the zero and one wheels, so the first and second wheel inside of the wheels array are the front two wheels. So when we apply maximum force to that, we should assume that the car sort of moves forward. If we press S or down arrow, then we're going to sort of move the car backwards by doing negative force for the zero and one wheel. The next thing is steering. So here, if we press the left or right arrow, we're gonna to want to steer the car. So again, the vehicle class has a helper function here called set steering value. You can sort of look into the inner details here, but it just does some math functions to ensure that the car sort of moves as you would expect it to if you press left or right arrow on key down is going to add the force. And of course, when we when we release the key, we wanna remove the force. So we're gonna add another event listener called key up. And all we're doing here is instead of adding the maximum force, we're gonna set that to be zero. So now if I reverse the page, we got our car. And now if I press W, you'll see that it's moving forward. And again, uh, in this scenario, the front two wheels are these two ones right over here. So if I press back, you'll see that these two ones start moving. And if I sort of uh, go forward and maybe I press the right arrow, you'll see that it turns right. So we can sort of start moving the car in a circle. And if I move backwards, it sl sort of slowly starts losing the force. And we can also, you know, uh, rotate it like this. And, you know, we basically got our simple little car controls up and running at this point. Now what we want to do is set up the physics world to be in sync with the 3JS game world so that, you know, we actually have a car on screen and not this wireframe. So in order to sync the game world with the physics world, what we're going to want to do is to first create our box as well as the four separate spheres and sync them with the separate objects in the physics world. So here I'm creating the box geometry, which is of size eight by one by four, the same size as the car body in our physics world. Then we're also going to create four different sphere geometries. Now, last thing to do is that on every animation frame, we've got to update these values. Now, the code here is honestly a little bit redundant, and there's definitely a lot of cleanup that could be done, but again, this is just for demo purposes. Here you can see that the car body position is being copied into the box mesh, and the car body quaternion is being copied into the box mesh quaternion. And we're doing the same thing for the other physics objects as well. So here, wheel body one is related to sphere mesh one, wheel body two is related to sphere mesh two, and so on and so forth. So, so now you can see that 3JS world, which actually contains this mesh, is now in sync with the physics world. So if I move forward, you know, the circle is going to move. If I move backwards, it's going to move. If I turn around, 3JS game is in sync with the physics world. So now we basically have our full end-to-end -end 3JS physics simulation completed. But just remember that these videos only scratch the surface of what's possible. You can learn a lot more by looking at the demos on the Canon.js website. If you made it this far, then I'd really appreciate it if you could just hit the like button and consider subscribing for more videos just like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.